Come on, give the Lord praise. Yes. Yes. Bless the Lord. specifically and turn from our wicked ways and so on he's going to heal our land and God knows our land needs to be healed doesn't it amen so what I'm going to do I'm going to lead us in a prayer of repentance so that we can lay our hearts out and let him search our hearts we're going to come into the presence of the king and we're asking for his blessing we're going to be asking his blessing upon the meeting tonight and a breakthrough we need a breakthrough we need a breakthrough in Micah he talks about those that are the breakers and we need a breaker anointing tonight to break through and so father I ask right now in Jesus name as we acknowledge you as king of kings and lord of lords we say almighty God our king Search our hearts tonight. Lord, your word says that we can ascend to the hill of the Most High if our hearts are clean and our hands are pure. And so, Father, purify us tonight. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We lift you up. We bless your name. We acknowledge that you are the king of the universe. You are the king of all that is and will ever be and has ever been. You are the almighty one who rules over all of the affairs of man. And so, God, we place ourselves in your hand tonight. And we say, Lord, hear us, hear from heaven. Hear from heaven and heal our land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we do not presumptuously come into your presence, but we come in with a humble hearts, realizing who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We worship you. Oh, we worship you, oh God, we worship you, oh Lord. Now, all of you that have a prayer language, let's just begin to speak in our prayer language and see God break the heavens open. Yes. Receive our worship, oh God. Receive our worship. Now, Father, we ask you tonight, Lord, to be in total control of everything that is said and done in this building. God, we place this meeting in your hands. Come on, everybody, let's agree. We place this meeting in your hands, oh God. Pray along with me. Amen. This meeting belongs to you. We are joined here in your name. But God, we need help from the sanctuary. Oh Lord, we are summoning and asking you to release, yes, the warring angels and the heavenly angels to come and descend and descend upon our worship tonight. Oh God, and to be in our midst, we, we encourage and we summon, yes, those, oh, clouds of witnesses to be in our midst. Oh God, we ask that there would be a clearness in the heavens. Lord, an openness tonight over this building and this place and in our individual lives yes, so that your Lord. glory can flow. Lord, we ask the anointing to be upon not only this church and all of us, but upon the speakers, oh God, that there will be no hindrances. Father, let souls be brought to, into your kingdom tonight. Let backsliders come. Let addictions be broken, oh God. And Lord, let your healing flow. you Jesus Lord we will give you the praise and the glory and all of the honor Lord for it's all about you it's all to your glory God let Brownsville truly be the house of mercy truly bear your heart oh God let the love flow out of this place Lord to the nations to the hurting to all, oh God, who is seeking something for the weariness of their soul, Lord, let it flow out of this place, even this place, all across Florida tonight. 
all of the trouble and the problems that have been in this state, oh God, let your love and your mercy and your glory flow into Tallahassee and all across this great state. And Lord, I ask for the hearts of men as they're troubled across this nation. Lord, let this be a time of reaching out to you, reaching out and embracing you. God, that you will awaken the sinner, that you will awaken the sinner to their need, oh God, and let the mercy and the love flow to them. Father, we ask that our prayers would reach to Israel tonight. Oh, we ask that our prayers will reach to Israel tonight. Let our prayers take wing. Let our prayers take wings, oh God, and land over that nation. And Lord, we speak peace. We speak peace and blessing across our nation and all of the nations of the world tonight. Lord, you come forth in great power and glory. Let the revelation of who you are be made manifest to all of mankind. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise you, Jesus.
how lovely is your dwelling place oh lord almighty my soul longs and even faints for For there my heart is satisfied within your presence. I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. And better is one day. Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. Church, oh Lord, my soul longs, my soul, and even fades for you. For there, my heart is satisfied. For there, my <laughs> within your presence. Tonight I sing beneath the shadow, beneath the shadow of your wings. I'd rather be where you are, Lord, than in the house of the king, than in the house of presidents, than before great governors. I'd rather be in your house, Lord. I'd rather be in your house, Lord. I'd rather be in your house, worshiping you. I love to worship you. How lovely is your dwelling place. Come and play mine. Oh Lord Almighty, my heart, my soul longs and even faints for you. For here my soul is satisfied within your presence. I sing beneath the shadow of your wings. Your wings. Better is one day. Come on, turn and sing. <laughs> There's one thing I ask and one thing I would seek. Oh, I want to see your beauty. 
I want to find the place. Make this place, Lord, where your glory dwells. Sing, I've tasted, I've tasted, and I've come once again, once again to me. I will draw near. Say it again. I will draw near to you. To you. Everybody sing. <laughs> thing I desire is to see your beauty. Want to stay right in the place where your glory dwells. <laughs> Come on, church, sing. Better is one day in your course. Sing it to him, Better not to me. It's all about you. Come on, church. It's all about you. We're sorry, Lord. We're sorry, Lord. For the thing we've made. When it's all about you. It's all about you. We're coming back, church. Sing. We're coming back to the heart of worship. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. We're sorry, Lord, for the thing we've made. It. It's all about you. Come on, Steve, play. It's all about you. Come on, just enter into the presence of the Lord. Come on, play that flute, Steve. Come on, forget about everything around you. Enter in. Come on, jump into the presence of God. He's here. Forget about everything around you. It's just us, Lord. It's just us, Lord. Come on, play, Steve. Play, Steve.
my heart burns for you. In my heart burns for you. And my heart burns for you. One more time, everybody sing. My heart. And my heart. And my heart. And my heart. For you. Now lift your voice to the Lord. Come on. That's it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Let's just settle in for a minute. It's cold and rainy outside. We got nowhere else to go. We got nothing else to do as important. We could sing a bunch of songs and walk away from here and it would just we'd say, well, that was nice. I'm tired of nice. I want God. Mike wrote a song. I have never sang it, but I think now's the time to sing it. He sang it, but I love it. It was like this. Your love is higher than the mountain. Your grace is deeper than the sea. Your mercy never ceases to amaze me. Day after day, your love for me remains. Everybody sing it, come on. Your love is higher than the mountains, is higher than the mountains. Your grace is deeper than the sea. Your grace deeper than the sea your mercy never ceases to amaze me your mercy never ceases to amaze me day after day your love for me remains day after day your love for me remains and deep within my heart I'm crying out for you wrap your arms around this heart of mine each and every day I'll give you all my praise I am falling so in love with you every day more and more and more Sing it to him, church. Your grace is deeper than the sea. It's deeper than the sea. Your mercy never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> amaze me. Day after day, your love for me remains. Day after day, your love for me remains. Hallelujah. Morning by I awake to see the sun 
never ceases to amaze me. Day after day, your love for me remains. Day after day, your love for me remains. And I'm your beloved, your creation. And you love me as I am. Yes, you do. You call me chosen for your kingdom. Unashamed to call me your own. I'm your beloved. I'm your beloved. Your creation. Your creation. You love me as I am. You call me chosen for your kingdom. Oh, I'm ashamed to call me I'm your beloved. sweet Jesus and you are good 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 you are good, oh Lord, my name. You are good. You are good. And I've decided to create a place for you, Lord. I've decided, Lord, to make a place for your presence. Lord, in this place tonight, we've made a place for you. Lord, we don't come as spoiled children, but Lord, we come as worshipers. And we say, Lord, you're worthy. You're beautiful. You're lovely. And worship awaits you in this house. Adoration awaits you in this house. Honor awaits you in this house. The love of your people awaits you in this house. Come, O oh blessed one. Come, O oh blessed one, to this house. So that we may adore you and bow down before you we may bow before you we will bow we will bow to our King We will bow, we will bow to our King. We will bow, we will bow to our King. 
Say that again. Come on. We will bow. We will bow to our think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. Come on, choir. When I think They pick me up. How he picked me up. They turn me around. Turn me around. How he placed my feet. On solid ground. On solid ground. When I think about the Lord, everybody say. When I think about the Lord. How he saved me. How he saved me. How he raised me. Fill me, fill me with the Holy Ghost. How He healed me. <laughs> hey, when I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and He turned me around, set my feet on all solid ground. And then he raised me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. And he healed my body to the uttermost. Ah, ah, ah. When I think about the Lord, I remember how he picked me up. And he turned me around. And he placed my feet.
of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Come on, let's take the roof off one more time. Thanks be. I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. Oh, the Lord has been so good to me. I feel like praising him. I feel like praising him. Oh, yeah. I feel like praising him. The Lord has been so good. The Lord has been so good to me. I feel like praising him. I feel like clapping my hands. Beach camp, and I took back what is all me. Yes, I took back, took back the name of my family. Oh, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back my nation. I took back what is all me. Come on, he's under my feet. Now you. Let everything that has breath. Rid 
You're the black and white, everything that's breathing tonight. Come on. I love this part. Let everything that has breath. Come on, choir. I want to praise the Lord. Now, before you do that, listen, here's what I want to tell you. Whenever the devil comes at you and attacks you, <clears throat> he usually drops a seed in your mind to trouble you. He gives you a bad report, yeah. a bad diagnosis. And as soon as that happens, you go into fear, you go into worry and insecurity. Sometimes it can last for a few minutes, a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, a few months, a few years. Yes. And inevitably, God always comes through for you. But listen, there's no equality between the time we give to the devil and the time we give to God. That's right. When the devil drops the bomb, we give him all that fear and all that insecurity 
for a long time. Sometimes people even travel to work, they don't even know how they got there. They're so distracted with worry and fear. But when God comes through, about the best we give him is a few seconds of thank you. Thank you, Lord. Well, this is Thanksgiving. And for the next three minutes, I want you to lift your voices and thank God for everything he's done. Everything he's doing and will do. Come on. It's great. 
It's big. It's really, really, really big. From Pensacola to Key West. Yes, Lord. From Palm Beach to Tampa, St. Petersburg. All the way up to Tallahassee. Jacksonville. The whole of the Sunshine State is on the lips of every American. And they're saying, what's going on in Florida? Well, Lord, you're just about to show them. We don't know what it is, but you're just about to show them. Lord, send strong, warring angels. Woo! Send strong, warring angels to fight for us Floridians, Lord. Let them come and wage battle. It looks like things are locked up for weeks and months to come. But oh, when Michael draws his sword, that's all she wrote. Lord, let it be said this night, there will not be no princes of Persia over the state of Florida. There will not be no such thing as a type of a principality like the prince of Persia over the state of Florida. But Lord, there's heavenly, powerful, huge, warring angels that is warring on our behalf. And right now, I give assent and I give recognition and a matter of fact, we just stick a fuel line into them right now with our prayers and our intercession. And Lord, you said from the first day you heard Daniel's prayer, it wasn't until 21 days later, but Lord, we don't know what's going on, but right now we want to fuel our angels to fight for the state of Florida. Woo, come on. Let's fuel the angels. Come on, help me pray for a minute. Come on. We pray, Lord, that those angels will just receive strength right now from the prayers of Brownsville. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. I said the Lord God omnipotent reigns. He has not left his throne above. He has not been dethroned. He has not been neglectful. He has not forsaken his people. He has not dozed off to sleep. He is cognizant of what's going on. And I say in the ears of our Lord right now, we shall not fail and we shall not grow faint and we shall not be weary or discouraged but lord there's war going on we will suit up in the whole armor of god and we will stand face to face with the enemy in this hour and we declare by the power of the gospel of jesus christ that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world we speak it Yes, in the did. name of Jesus. We declare your word, Lord. Hallelujah. This is not a Democrat thing or a Republican thing. It's a God thing. And I got news for you. It won't be settled by the Supreme Court of Florida or of Washington. It will be settled by the courts of heaven. Let that be known this night in the name of Jesus. Man goes running to the magistrates and man goes running to the earthly judges and the earthly courts. But thank God there is a power higher than that. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. My God has given him a name above every name. His name is above George W. Bush. His name is above the name of Al Gore. His name is above the name of Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. His name! Woo! Now, why not? His name is Jesus. Somebody help me tonight. Stand 
up and join hands right now. Lift your hands heavenward and let's just begin to pray. Come on. Let's pray for major breakthrough. Come on, do it. Woo! 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 Shika pa 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 ya. We declare in the name of Jesus victory. 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 In the powerful and the glorious name of Jesus. Our God is an awesome God. I'm trying to help you catch a vision tonight, friend. I said our God is an awesome God. Yes, he is. Man is weak, but our God is strong. Declare the word of the Lord. Man is ignorant, but our God is all-knowing. Man is impotent. But my God is all powerful and almighty, I said in the name of Jesus. Who are you? Let the heathen rage. Let the heathen rage. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the Son of Man? But our God sits on the circle of the earth. I said, my God sits on the circle of the earth. There is nothing hidden from his view. He knows. And my God can do anything. My God is able. I said, my God is able. My God is able. I said, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able. My God. weak but God is strong man's mind will fail him his wisdom will will like a plant in the desert but all oh, the wisdom of God shall prevail I've cast my anchor and it is caught on the rock of ages I pulled on the rope and it ain't a budgeon let the man, let man's heart fail him. The Bible said in the last days, men's heart will fail him for fear. But I've cast my anchor and his grab hold of the rock of ages. I'm steadfast and I'm sure tonight. I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Somebody shout amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. It feels like a stick of dynamite's been lit. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Well, I better hush. No, don't. Just keep going. I enjoyed that. That, that, was, that was for me. It wasn't for you. I needed that. Y'all can be seated. If I don't hush, I won't give it to the preacher. I felt a little black thing happening there on me a while ago. I don't know what it was, but old Brother Lindell was helping me out. I wasn't preaching like no Presbyterian. I felt a little black thing happening there. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful tonight that we have with us who we have with us, and that is Robert Kenyaja. I want to say this. I appreciate Robert Kenyaja more than he will ever know for a lot of different reasons. Number one, because I believe him to be a man of the Lord. He's an humble man. He's a man that's fearless, and he'll move out, and he'll step out on that high wire when other preachers would grab hold of the post and hang on. <clears throat> but he'll venture out there on the high wire 
and he's believing God for signs and wonders and miracles. As a matter of fact, the last time he was here, we had a, quite a number of things take place that was really powerful. A lot of people were healed. You'll understand something about man, and that is that all of us have our flaws and all of us have our weaknesses and our shortcomings. John Kilpatrick's got them, we've all got them, and Robert kenyaj has got them. He's just a vessel that God uses. But I'm happy tonight that he's here. This man has had a burden for our church as no other man that's come through these, this pulpit. He's loved Brownsville. He's loved it from afar, and whenever he's been here and had advantage of this pulpit, he has been a blessing to this church. And I wonder tonight, would you give him a good rousing Brownsville welcome? Robert Kenyaji. <laughs> Oh, come on, clap your hands to Jesus. God is a good God. Somebody say, God is a good God. You may be seated in the mighty presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, before I go any other farther, I, um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm from Africa, so I don't live around here. And uh, two things I've learned about, Pastor, about the uh, United States elections uh, and I believe sometimes Satan will always do things to uh, to paint a picture to make you think that what you're going through is the worst thing that has ever happened but if you simply look around you you realize it's it, it is a lesson it is teaching you it is teaching somebody else somebody say amen, amen. you are literally teaching somebody else something somebody say I'm teaching somebody something if this was to happen in any other country in the whole world apart from United States where people don't know who won the elections cities and towns will be in flames right now people will be fighting so this is a real lesson about democracy that the people can disagree and yet leave their cities to survive so yeah so instead of looking at it in a negative sense, I'm telling you, many our, our leaders in Africa I've been talking to have come out to say, now, look at what these people are doing. They have gone through all this and still they're, they're, you know, they're allowing the process to take its course. And I think it's another lesson for people need to learn, especially in other emerging democracies around the world. So don't beat up yourself. Um, somebody's learning. Somebody say amen. But also, uh, and you know, I'm just speaking this, and, uh, and, and, and I don't know, you know, I don't know what your political affiliation you belong to, and I don't know whom you voted. But three years ago, I was preaching at Pastor uh, Bob Nichols' church. And it was a Sunday morning, and I was preaching. He brought this attention to me, and uh, he said, I want you to listen to this tape, because he was in Uganda during the time of the elections here. He had gone there for the television station and he said, he said, remember, and I said, uh, I don't remember. He said, three years ago, you came to our church and this is the story. I was preaching about the message called the seed and I hope you'll be able to find that message on the uh, outside there on the table. And uh, it's one of the powerful messages that God has ever given to me. And... Uh, how many of you know we are all seeds? Turn to the pastor next to you and say, hi, seed. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I stopped in the middle of the, uh, of the message. I think it's on the second side of the tape. I stopped there in the middle of the, of, of, of the message and I, I said, that says the Lord. The next president of the United States is going to be a born again Christian. Now that is three, three years ago, three and a half years ago. Now I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know what that means to you, but I just want to tell you this, it's already been settled in the courts of heaven. No matter what somebody's gonna do or whatever. And, uh, and, and, and this, is, this, is, this is serious because in the Old Testament, if a prophet came and prophesied and things didn't come out true, he's stoned to death. 
And so when he told me that, and that time, two days before the election, my heart began rushing. And I said, I'll never come to your church because you may be the first one to, to kill me. But, but I just want to say this, God knew three and a half years ago. Now, one of the strangest things you're going to see, because in the prophecy, this is what the Lord was saying. He said, even up right now, he's not even known. He's not presumed to be running. But when he comes, you will know. Now, those are the details on, on, on the prophecy part of it. And usually it doesn't happen when you are in the middle of preaching. It's three years before elections. Sometimes God won't speak to you unless God knew what was going to happen. Two things I really be believe is going to happen. That God's word is going to come true. Amen. Not because I said it, but because the course of heaven knew what was going to take place. And, uh, and I know when he walks in that office, he will definitely know it wasn't the votes of the people. It was the will of God to put him over there. Because it, it's, it has nothing to do with people. It has nothing to do. Secondly, one thing that you need to learn out of all this that I'm, I'm sensing, that this is a fight of the heart of a nation. And, uh, and it has nothing to do with, 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 you know, with what somebody else will do, but this is a fight of the heart of a nation. And I believe that God is going to really, really use, and I pray so much and thank God. You know, I thank God for the revival that has been in this place. I thank God for Bransville. I thank God for Pastor Kilpatrick because he dared five and a half years ago to launch into revival. All of us here tonight will be completely confused like the rest of everybody if it wasn't for revival. But our hearts are launched into the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus and thank God for revival. Thank God for revival. Well, tonight I feel the Holy Spirit is about to release something in our hearts. Somebody say amen. amen. God is a good God. Before we came in here, I met a beautiful young lady and first of all i met her father who is a, a television director here and that beautiful uh, his daughter uh when we were here last time she had a problem with her knee and uh, and the lord miraculously touched her and healed her i don't know where she is i, I sense something that was you know upon this girl there's such an anointing of the holy spirit and i want to tell you many parents that you don't know what is happening to you when your children come through this revival you don't know what's taking place because the anointing is evident upon their lives. And I believe it's not only me, but everybody who will look at them will definitely know that these children are completely different from the children of the rest of other places. So it's such a blessing to have your children come in the revival of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. And I'm so grateful. I'm trying to take Pastor Kilpatrick and uh, Brother Linda to Uganda. And... Uh, Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Can I take them? For five years. What? I thought you people are believers. The Bible says, give, it shall be given back to you, you know. You give him to us for five years, God will give him back to you. you know? Well, you're not believers, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I bring you greetings from my wife and my three kids, twin daughters and my son. And God is doing a tremendous, tremendous work in Uganda. It's unbelievable. We've just come back from Japan. God has opened up Japan, and God is doing a tremendous, tremendous work. We're going back in April, and uh, it's, it's marvelous. One of the things that happened to Japan, Pastor, was so amazing. I've never seen it in my life. We are in this uh, uh, Colosseum that is about eight, 600 people there, and, and that's a great number to have in Japan. And there is a lady who brings her daughter. She's blind. And then uh, I lay hands on her and she falls down under the power. And the lady hit me in the chest. She said, you've put a spirit in my daughter. Boom. She was such a short lady, but she hit me so hard. 
and I felt the African man rising up inside of me and I said Lord have mercy but well what happened was that she hit me she fell down under the power of God she she went down like this and she also fell down under the power of God and she was shouting she said you have electricity in you you have electricity in you well she fell down under the power of God and then uh, I, I, I asked the ushers to pick up the girl and uh, her eyes had been opened by the power of God and something happened when her eyes were open the mother could not get up she was she was stuck to the floor and she was just crying and repenting and, and, and speaking. Somebody was giving us interpretation and she was just repenting from generation to generation. I mean, she was crying, everybody was crying. And that's, this girl's eyes were opened. All of a sudden, about 600 people. Man, I have never seen so many cameras at the same time. I don't know where they came from. Everybody, I said, are the angels here or stars here? What's happening? I've never seen so many cameras. Man, I, they, they just pulled them from nowhere. <laughs> but what really happened was, this lady, after four hours, she got up, and in the evening, she went and brought, she was a doctor, she brought every patient in her clinic. <laughs> and she came forward and said, heal them. <laughs> Give them what you gave my daughter, heal them. And then, of course, we, we led her to the Lord and about 45 of her patients gave their life to Jesus. And, and, and so God is beginning to crack Japan and I believe God is going to do a tremendous work. Somebody say amen. Lift up your hand, everyone. Say, Jesus, I'm ready. Jesus, I'm ready in Jesus name turn to your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 8 please the book of action how many of you know God has graduated from the book of numbers to the book of action and I'm telling you pastor this is the greatest crowd you could find in the whole world especially after Thanksgiving you people are really hungry for God with all the rain with all the weather and with all the turkeys if you could come <laughs> praise god praise be to god almighty I, I i really 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 i think the heavens everybody right now i don't know if there is any church right now going on especially in the united states i believe god is pleased with what he's seeing here thank you for loving god thank you for loving him the book of acts chapter 8 In verse 26 now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down to from Jerusalem to Gaza this is a desert so he arose and went and behold a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority and a cadence the queen of Ethiopians who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot he was reading Isaiah the prophet then the spirit said to Philip go near and overtake this chariot so Philip ran to him and had him reading the prophet Isaiah and he said do you understand what you are reading and he said how can I unless someone guides me and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him the place in which scripture which he was reading was this he was laid as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before his shearer is silent so he opened on his mouth and in his humiliation his justice was taken away and who will declare his generation for his life is taken away from the earth so the eunuch answered philip and said i ask of whom does the prophet say this of himself or someone other man then philip opened his mouth and beginning at his scripture preached jesus to him now as they came down to the road they came to the to the same water 
And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized them. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord called Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotos, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Heavenly Father, we are hungry for a divine impact. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Come on, shout out and say divine impact. divine impact. Our world and our generation will never be the same again. We've been impacted by things that have happened to human beings for the past 2,000 years. But more recently, we've been impacted by things like AIDS. AIDS has literally impacted the human race. We've been impacted by the stock market. We've been impacted by elections. We've been impacted by all things we see. Cancer has literally changed our lives. Literally Y2K literally, literally impacted the whole world. Technology has impacted the whole world. Computers has impacted the whole world. Television, radio, communication, phones have literally impacted the human life. Recently, I was to the town before, uh, before the town of this year, uh, uh, last year, everybody was so scared, especially those who didn't believe in revival and those who didn't believe in God. They were so scared, they thought uh, Y2K was coming. They thought the bug was going to destroy everything. I remember I was in England and I was talking to people and some of the pastors, we are on a talk show radio, and they were saying to me, said, well, we are so scared about what's going to happen because anything can go wrong. And then something dropped in my mind, just with common sense, it dropped in my mind that there were six billion people on the face of the earth. Six billion people on the face of the earth. And five billion people have never seen a computer. So how could their world come to an end? Because somebody's computer forgot to click the 2000. But literally, we've been impacted by computers, by life, by, by everything that has changed our lives. But I sense in my spirit we need a divine impact. We need to be impacted. Our lives need to be impacted by divinity. We need, God has to come himself strong. God must show himself strong in our day-to-day -day lives, in our homes, in our families. Somebody say divine impact. Divine. The Bible has just given us a character here to use, and this is an Ethiopian eunuch. This man was a very man of great authority. In other words, he was a treasurer. He was in charge of all the wealth of the kingdom of Ethiopia. And when we talk about Ethiopia, I'm not talking about a country as we see today. Ethiopia at that time was the Sub-Sahara Africa. It took all the way from, uh, from Sub-Sahara Africa. That's what we, we refer to as the Black Africa. It goes all the way up to South Africa, to the Zululand, and up to West Africa, to, to, to Nigeria and Algeria, or in East Africa up to Kenya. So all that vast land was under the authority of Queen of Ethiopia. Uh, and from that time, since she came, Queen Sheba came to Solomon's place and she worshipped God and showed the power of God. Every year she used to tithe her entire kingdom and send a 10% through the treasurer to go to Jerusalem to worship God and take the offering there every single year since Solomon's day. And this man was returning from Jerusalem to worship God. The Bible says he was returning to worship God. Say, he was a worshiper. You see, true worshipers of God will always have seven blessings. Say, seven blessings. If you're a worshiper of God and Jesus, when he came, he said, the Father is looking for such. God is no longer looking for stars. He's not looking for people who are more powerful. He's looking for worshipers. I said, God is looking for worshipers. They will have seven blessings. Blessing number one, God will always hear their prayers. If you are a worshiper of God, God will hear your prayers. How many of you want God to hear your prayers? Number two, God will always be your strength. 
Oh, somebody say amen. amen. How many of you need some strength from God? God is your strength if you're a true worshiper. Number, blessing number three, God will always be your help. Not only in times of trouble, but all the time. Hallelujah. Number four, God will always be your salvation. He will save you from every situation. He will save you from accidents. He will save you from death. If you are a worshiper of God, even from the food you eat, sometimes today we can't even trust the water we drink anymore. We can't even trust the food we eat in the restaurant anymore. We can't even trust the clothes we wear. You can't even trust the planes you fly on. You can't even trust the weather, but God will be your salvation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Number five, God will be your blessing provider. Woo. He will supply your blessings. Blessing number six, God will become your shield and your defense. He becomes your bodyguard. Hallelujah. Blessing number seven, God will become your food supplier. Even when Piggy Wiggly closes down, God will still supply your food. <laughs> Glory to God Almighty. Worshippers of God are always rewarded a divine impact in order to change their generation. The question this man was asking, remember he was a worshipper. Ever say he was a worshipper. If you want to be divinely impacted, you must worship God. Come on, lift up your hand and say, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Then divine impact is on the way. Also, this man had something with him. He was reading the word. The Bible says he was reading in prophet Isaiah, though he did not understand what he was reading because he asked a question. Philip asked him a question. Do you understand what you're reading? Many of us today, we've got so many translations of the Bible, but we don't understand what we are reading. Ask the person next to you, do you understand what you're reading? If he doesn't answer, you slap him. <laughs> do you understand what you are reading? Do you understand? We read the Bible. There are so many translations. We don't understand what we are reading. This man was reading, though he could not understand. If you want to receive a divine impact, keep on reading. Though you don't understand anything in the Bible, but keep on reading. Revelation is on the way. Revelation is on the way. God will find a way of impacting you if you keep your eyes in the word of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. It does not matter where you are. You may be in the middle of the desert. You may be in the middle of where, like this Ethiopian eunuch. He was in the desert. Nobody was there. No trees, no church, nobody. He was coming from Jerusalem to worship God. He's reading. He doesn't understand. But God sent him revelation. Tell your neighbor, say revelation is on the way. You are about to understand how things are and how things are supposed to be in the word of God. Woo! Tell your neighbor, say, I need a divine impact. Though he didn't understand, but he kept on reading. And he was reading from prophet Isaiah, which says, who will declare his generation? His question was about the generation. Ever said generation? The word generation comes from the word, two words, gene and ratio. You look the way you look because of the genes in your body. You inherit the genes from your predecessors, from your past, from your ancestors. The man had been in Jerusalem. He had, was walking where Jesus walked. He had been in the temple where Jesus preached and he said, if anybody is thirsty, come and drink. He had been in Jerusalem where Jesus died and buried and rose again. And yet while he was there, he felt no power of Jesus. He felt no touch of Jesus. He felt no ability, no spirit of Jesus. He was coming from Jerusalem where about 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, the Holy Ghost has landed on the day of Pentecost. And with flames of fire, men were talking in other tongues. And yet he felt nothing. And the question was, who is the person who has got the genes of Jesus in him? 
Who is the person who has got the gene ratio of Jesus? We hear about the Joshua generation. We hear about somebody's generation. But I want to see the generation of the Jesus people. I want to see the generation of the Jesus people. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to see a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a young man, a young woman, an old man who has got enough genes of Jesus in him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Man, I need a divine impact. The man said, who is the person who will show me the somebody who has got the gene ratio of Jesus in him? Who will declare his generation? This guy is in a chariot. Chariot is driven by horses. No air condition. He's sweating. He's in the middle of the desert. And I tell you, every year he had walked that journey. Every year. I don't know for how long. But he had walked that journey to and fro, to hot. And all of a sudden, somebody, a stranger, comes from nowhere. In a desert, no trees grow there. Everything is dry, sand. He's sweating. The horses are running. All of a sudden, some, some, somebody come walking and is about to overtake him. How can somebody on foot try to overtake a horse? Because what sweats you doesn't sweat God. <laughs> something is about to overtake you. Somebody says something is about to overtake you. <laughs> Say mercy is about to overtake you. Goodness is about to overtake you. Miracles are about to overtake you. Joy is about to overtake you. Power is about to overtake you. I don't know what is sweating you. I don't know what is bothering you. But the goodness of God is about to overtake us. Somebody shout hallelujah. Philip is coming. He's walking and this man is... Do you know what is overtaking? It's like being on a freeway. Driving a VW. Then someone comes with a Lamborghini. That's what they call overtaking. Somebody shout hallelujah. Of course, David said, Surely goodness and mercy shall do what? Follow you all the days of your life. But in the book of Acts, under divine impact, goodness and mercy does not follow you, they overtake you. Oh, tell your neighbor, said, you are about to be overtaken by the goodness of the Lord, by the joy of the Lord, by the power. How many of you want to be overtaken by the power of God, by the salvation of God, by the peace that passes all understanding? Zoom. Come on, somebody say, zoom. I'm ready to be overtaken. I, I want to be overtaken by revival. I want to be overtaken by the, by the blessings of God. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. This man is reading. He doesn't understand. And remember, something happened to him. Number one, he's a worshiper. Number two, he's a reader of the word. So the man comes to him and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I understand? And the Bible says he asked him to come in the chariot. He said, John the chariot man. This man made room for the Holy Ghost. Remember, the Bibles had not yet been written. They were using scrolls. And if each scroll was a chapter, those were 61 chapters this man had in his chariot. 
I don't know how big the chariot was, but he had to push all the scrolls aside to welcome in a stranger. How many of you, when you're driving on a freeway, a stranger stops you and you put him in a car? There must be something wrong with you. This man is in the middle of a desert. He has never seen Philip before. Why did he bring him in the chariot? Because Philip had a gene ratio of Jesus. That when the man listened and looked to Philip, he had no fear. There was perfect peace. Philip looked exactly like Jesus. You know, whenever Jesus wanted to feed the hungry, he never called Peter. He turned to Philip. Why? Because it was Philip who first found Jesus. And ran and told Nathaniel and everybody. And he said, I've found Jesus. I have found him. That's why Jesus sent Philip to this Ethiopian eunuch. In other words, in fact, Philip in chapter 8, he was in Samaria having the greatest revival of his life. A greatest witch in Samaria had just got converted and joined the church. With all the money he had taken from the people, he was now tithing. Philip had it right. And God said, I'm interrupting you. I want you to go and meet a man in the desert. You see, when you're a worshiper and a reader of the word, and you're willing to make room for the Holy Spirit, God will bring you the best. If God had sent Peter down there to that guy, Philip would have succumb I mean, Peter would have circumcised him. <laughs> but he couldn't. He sent him Philip. Somebody say amen. Somebody said, I need a divine impact. He made room. Tell your neighbor, say, make room. For the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, make room. make room. Think about if that man was in today's life, the laptop was there, he was the accountant, he had to balance books, he had to tell back the report, this is what I gave to the poor, this is what I gave to the church, this is what I did. He had to give back a report. He had all things piled up in his store. His food, his water, he's, he's going through from Jerusalem to Africa. He had, it's very hot. He had to make room for the Holy Ghost. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, make room for the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, if you want to receive a divine impact, you'll have to make room for the Holy Ghost. You cannot just be, I'm already set my mind. This is my budget. This is what I'm going to do. This is my time. This is my hour. People who are ready to make room for the Holy Ghost will always receive a divine impact. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor, I remember the first time God spoke to me to come to the United States. I was very, very young. And I was, that was 1983. I had just been in a battle with the Lord for four years, whether I should go in the ministry or not. I never wanted to be a preacher because we were so poor. My dad had to do four jobs as a pastor, as a head teacher, as a former man, and, uh, and, and as a father in order to, to take us to school. Because in Africa, there's no free school. You have to go to school. You have to pay school fees from kindergarten up to university. And we were, I was born in a very small family, 13 children. And I'm number 12. We were so poor that the poor people called us poor. When poor people call you poor, you are really poor. I remember I put on my first pair of brand new shoes at the age of 14. And it was not really new. Because my parents could only buy, we were nine boys, they could only buy for the elder one. And you have to wait until it trickles down to you. So by the time that pair of shoes trickled down to me, its head was open as a dead fish. <laughs> but I had to believe God and, and I said, Lord, I want to become a lawyer and I'm going to study for that. I'm going to become an economist, I'm going to become somebody else, I'm going to be a preacher. I don't want to be a preacher. And then God interrupted everything. How many of you know he... He's, he's the professor of interruption. <laughs> so he interrupted everything. And, and, and so I battled with him for four years. 
I was in total rebellion. I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Finally, he convinced me, said, I want you to get out of the country and go to the country that I saw you. He never told me, but I felt in my spirit he was leading me. And so I landed in Los Angeles and I connected to San Diego. It was in British Airways. I don't know why I said San Diego. Maybe because I had known, I have heard about Maurice Cerro. I'd been in our country, talked about San Diego. And I thought maybe God wants me to go see Maurice Cerro. Maybe go there. 83, I was very, very young. I was just 22 years old. I had no return ticket. I had only one dollar with me. And one dollar at that time in Uganda was a lot of money. And so I came with all the confidence and passed through. They never gave me trouble. Never, never at all. And I landed in, in, in Los Angeles. I connected to PSA. There was a flight at that time in 1983, an airline called Pacific South west airline now it's defunct it's no longer operating so i flew to san diego and arriving in san diego at the airport i took a cab to go to morris Cerro. now in africa churches are open 24 hours now at morris Cerro's office it was closed we arrived there at 9 15 p.m and i'm stranded and the cab driver said pay me 24 dollars and i had only one dollar I said, 24? I have only one dollar. And the man grabbed it from my hand. He said, who are you? Where are you from? I hear your accent. And as I told him the story, he said, well, I know where I can take you. So he drove me to San Diego City Mission. A place for the homeless. He said, they'll take care of you. And I walk in there with my Bible in my hand. It was very cold. It was February. I didn't know about anything about weather. We don't have snow in Africa or winter. <laughs> Man, I'm shaking. They say, you want to sell some coffee? I say, yeah. What do you want to eat? I said, nothing. They had some pizza there. I tried it. It was plastic. I said, shh. Ever since that time, me and pizza, we're not friends. <laughs> what happened was, I, 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 they took me in the room and I was in the middle. On the left, there was a guy who was drunk and he was singing all night long. <laughs> On the other side, there was a guy who had a cold. When he coughs, you think a bazooka has gone off. <laughs> and I remember that night I said, Lord, if you take me out of here, I'll bless you and I praise you the rest of my life. I will serve you. I have surrendered now. Take me back to my country. I can't stand this land. Well, the next day I woke up, I didn't have any appetite to eat, I'm in a strange land, and the devil said to me, Say, God brought you here to kill you. So I woke up in the morning and I walked back from San Diego City Mission to where Maurice Rose's office was. On the way, I come across this beautiful signpost, and I praise God for it. I had my Bible in my hand, and the sign was reading, Church's Chicken. And I said, Lord, praise God. The church here is so advanced, they've got their own chicken. <laughs> and I'm walking in this place called Church Chicken. And I put my Bible on the counter. And I said, <clears throat> my name is uh, Robert Kayanja. I'm a preacher from Uganda. Hello. Thinking, I th I'm thinking I'm in a church. <laughs> and I, 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 I take my, my Bible, I put it on the counter, and uh, to my surprise, the lady come from behind, and she was smoking. I've never seen anybody smoke in the church. <laughs> and I said, well, the church here is advanced, so I, you know... <laughs> All I need, I'm hungry, I need some chicken, you know. And, and she was speaking in a Californian accent. I said, what can I do for you? I said, ma'am, I'm, uh, I'm Robert Kayanja, I'm a preacher from Uganda. Uh, I'm hungry, I, I, I need some chicken. <laughs> she said to me, uh, I don't know whether she said crispy or she said what. Oh, drums. I, I can't even remember what she said. 
but I, I you know to an African man chicken is chicken you know I, I'm hungry I need some chicken and she said for how much and I said I have no money she said no money no chicken and I said what kind of a church this is I, I walk out and I look at the signpost and it's reading church chicken man I was impacted I was divinely impacted I left that place and I said my goodness I didn't know you know the words church chicken church to me church is church I didn't know it was a chain of restaurants you know but my life was completely transformed I mean coming from Africa is a culture shock but I was divinely impacted and I believe tonight God is seriously going to impact your life in Jesus mighty name somebody say amen, amen. somebody say make room for the Holy Ghost so this man allows Philip to sit in his boat in his chariot in, in, in they're, they're moving they're moving they're moving and the Bible said from that very scripture Philip began to preach to him Jesus have said Jesus. Jesus say it again Jesus. shout it now Jesus. shout it again Jesus. He began to preach to him Jesus it's amazing he didn't tell him about baptism he didn't tell him about the doctrines of the church he didn't tell him about anything else about healing about blessing about prosperity he began to tell him about Jesus you see if Jesus is lifted up he will open up somebody's eyes somebody shout hallelujah the greatest revelation that will ever happen to you is when Jesus is exalted somebody said Jesus 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 oh let the devil hear you talk about Jesus let cancer hear you talk about Jesus. Let drugs hear you talk about Jesus. Let religion hear you talk about Jesus. There is nothing that will ever bring revelation to you but the name of Jesus. At the sound of that name, demons tremble. At the sound of that name, blindness go. At the sound of that name, witchcraft is under your feet. At the sound of that name, somebody say Jesus. That is the name that is above every name. Actually, when you say Jesus, all the angels in heaven stand at at ease and say, what can we do for you? I don't know about you, but I love my Jesus. I don't know about you, I came to praise my Jesus. Oh, come on, brother, can you give us some drums and some organs here? I don't know about you, but I came to praise Jesus. When you pray in that name, God simply say, give him whatever he wants. No, oh. somebody say, gee, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is sweeter than the sweetest, sweetest, sweeter of the sweetest. Come on, somebody say, Jesus. Does anybody here love Jesus? Come on, shout his name again. Say, Jesus. The Bible say he began to preach Jesus to him. And the more he amplified that name of Jesus in his ears, revelation fell on him. The Bible doesn't say that Philip saw him the water. The Bible said the Ethiopian eunuch saw the water. This guy had been going through that journey year after year and it was a desert. When Jesus was amplified in his ears, his eyes were open and he saw water. Water in the desert? Yes. When you receive a divine impact, there will be water in the desert for you. There will be a miracle in the midst of your situation. There will be healing in the sickness situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Touch, touch your eyes and say, Jesus, open my eyes. No one will ever show you what you are looking for but the name of Jesus. Yes. All I can do tonight is simply amplify the name of Jesus. But it is be your eyes that will be open because you are hearing Jesus. Oh, lift those hands. Wave them again. Say, Jesus. Jesus, open my eyes. 
let me tell you something something is about to be revealed to you many times you've been driving to this revival to and fro from day to day week by week and there were certain things you never saw from your house to your job you've been driving there you never seen that business you've never seen that property you've never seen that house you've never seen that car to you it's been like a desert but until Jesus is lifted up you can't see it lift your hands and said I want to hear Jesus right now right now Jesus open my eyes water in the desert yes somebody say yes how many of you know if you have ever been in a desert and you see water that will be the greatest thing you've ever wanted to see I know some of you have been believing God and walking and walking even coming to this church you look around you've been believing God for a husband you look around you look around and all you see is just men your eyes are about to be open somebody shout hallelujah Touch your eyes, say, Lord, <laughs> open my eyes. How many of you want your spiritual eyes to be open to the real river of life? And the man says, stop, 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 the chariot, stop. And the chariot stopped. And say, what hinders me? What hinders me? Philip, what hinders me? Philip didn't tell him about water baptism. He didn't preach to him anything. He told him about Jesus. But the revelation made sense. What he had read, what he had heard for years, finally made sense. And no one can give you that but a divine impact. The Bible said the man was coming from Jerusalem, going through Gaza. Jerusalem has got two words in it. The first word is Jeruel, which means found in God. And the, the second one is Salem, which means peace. So this is peace found in God. This man was coming from the peace that is coming from God. To worship to praise God and he was going through Gaza not to Gaza but through Gaza Gaza is a city of the Philistine it's a stronghold you remember Samson he went to Gaza Gaza and the Bible said there he found a prostitute he was already married, but he went there and found himself a prostitute. Gaza is a place that kills marriage, that destroys family. It's a stronghold. Also, the people of Gaza, right, when they knew Samson had gone there, they wanted to kill him in a broad daylight. And he took hold of the gates of the city and took them to the mountain. It's a stronghold. This man was coming from worshiping God, from the presence of God, and he had to go through Gaza year after year, going through stronghold. It's like us today in the church. On Sunday, on Wednesday, on Friday, we are worshiping God and we are in the presence of God, in the peace of God. But then comes Monday, we go back through stronghold. We have to go through that struggle. We have to go through that lack. You have to go through that bondage. You have to go through that. And then next time you come back and you feel you don't want even to quit the Friday service or Wednesday service or Sunday service. But then Monday he knocks on the door. You are back through stronghold. But that day the divine impact said no more Gaza. 
before he entered Gaza, he was divinely impacted. The Bible said the man says, stop the chariot. And he was taken into this water. I don't know whether it was a river or a pool or a reservoir or a spring. I don't know what it was, but it was water in the desert. It's what the man needed to change his life, to change his outlook. And the Bible said when he came out of it, he was full of joy. The sad face of stronghold of Gaza was no longer there. Lift up your hand and say, whether Gaza or no Gaza, I am going to receive my impact tonight in Jesus' name. Say, no more Gaza, no more stronghold, no more attack of the enemy. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Shout hallelujah. How many of you have been rejoicing in the Lord, in the power of revival, and then the enemy tries to take you back in the stronghold, try to drive you back in the stronghold? I'm here to tell you, God is about to deliver you, and God is about to send you a divine impact in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible say he asked Philip to baptize him. You see, you cannot baptize yourself. That is called swimming. <laughs> to baptize is to immerse. Is to bury you under water. Have you ever seen people baptize? Have you ever seen people baptize? They come with beautiful makeup, beautiful hair. Then they are taken down. And what happens? You are about to be immersed in the presence of God. God is about to baptize you in the power of the Holy Ghost. God is about to baptize you in the joy of the Holy Ghost. God is about to baptize you in the power overcoming breakthrough. Tonight is a night of breakthrough. Somebody say tonight is a night of the breakthrough. Say tonight is the night of my breakthrough. In Jesus' name. Amen. When this man came out of the water, he saw no Philip. Philip was no more. Philip was not there. But he went on rejoicing because his faith was not in Philip. His faith was in Jesus. Number two, he who took Philip there could not leave him stranded. Pick him up again. And Philip did not go to the desert through Delta Airline, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Divine impact will cause you to move into areas faster and quicker than you ever known before. Lift up your hand, everyone. Say, oh God, tonight I need a divine impact. Five things in order to receive a divine impact. Number one, you must be a worshiper of God. Lift up your hand and say, I'll, I'll worship my God. Say it again. Number two, you must be a reader of his word. Say, I will read the word of God. Number three, you must make room for the Holy Spirit. Say, I will make room for the Holy Ghost. Number four, you must listen to the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus. Number five, you must see the water. Water in the desert? Yes. After two weeks in the States in 83, the Spirit of the Lord told me, said, in the middle of the night, he said, 
I want you to go back to Uganda. I had met some pastors, I had met some friends. They were going to line up, meet, preach across the country. I remember Pastor Don Price in Phoenix. I had met him. He had connected me to some pastors. But that Sunday night in his church, we were just witnessing, and a lady came out of the wheelchair, had been there for about 25 years in his church. He said, oh, you need to, we need to have revivals here. And after preaching for him for a week, the Lord said, I want you to go home. If you don't go home, I'm going to kill you. I said, Lord, I'll go home. Really, God was not going to kill me physically, like choke me. If I had, no, if I had stayed, probably I would not have gone back home. Because at the time, politically, the country was in turmoil. And I would not have done what, I, what God has caused us to do, over a thousand, planting over a thousand churches in the nation of Uganda. St seeing over four million people give their life to Jesus. And, and, and Muslims getting saved every day. Mosques being turned into churches. God had to expose my mind from my African setting, from the village where I grew up, so that he exposes my mind to something that it can happen. And as a result, we've just finished our 10,500 seater cathedral, dead free. I needed an impact. I needed an exposure. I needed to see. History has it that from that time, this Ethiopian eunuch went back to Ethiopia. And even up to now, they are Ethiopian Jews. And from that time, Christianity began to spread across Africa. 2,000 years ago. You might be the person God is going to impact and change your entire family and change your entire neighborhood. God's looking for such who will worship him in the spirit and in the truth. Lift up your hand, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Mention his name, mention his name, mention his name. Mention his name, mention his name, mention his name. Mention his name, mention his name. Somebody here, there's like a cancer in, in your stomach. There's, there's there's like a cancer in your stomach. You're in, in terrible pain. Please just 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 stand up on your feet and, and, and come down here quickly, please. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, sister, come here, sister. happening to you? It's just hard. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. In Jesus' name.
Uh, we don't know about the duodenum. Uh, it was a mass one to one and a half inches uh, two weeks ago on the CAT scan, two and a half weeks ago. Lift up your hand. <laughs> I want everybody to lift up your hand and just look at me for a moment. Two things will always happen where revival is. When you're about to shift into another gear, the enemy try to scare you and attack you, sometimes with a particular illness, a specific illness. It may be accidents, maybe cancer, it may be businesses going under. That's what the enemy does. And whenever you see that in the midst of a revival, you definitely know you have done a, dam a serious damage to the kingdom of darkness. What you need to do is not to lay down your guards, but to raise them higher and fight than ever before because the enemy is retreating. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The enemy is retreating. So with one voice, I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, get out of this place in Jesus name spirit of cancer go in Jesus name that's it in Jesus name go go in Jesus name Come out of a pancreas, come out of a liver, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know when Naaman dipped himself into that river of God, the leprosy left? How many of you know when the power of God, this man dipped himself into that river, something might have happened. If he had a skin rush, it left. Oh, lift up your hand. Say, I'm ready for the baptism of the power of God, for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Oh, come on, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. Yes, ma'am.
give you praise for fixing her knee lord the cartilage that is gone lord you are healing it every pain leaves yes breathe in mama breathe out breathe in breathe out breathe in pick up quickly please pick up this lady Lift up your leg. Put down. Put it up again. Put it up. Put it down again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pick it up again. Put it down. Listen, listen, hold on a minute. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was just responding to the Holy Ghost. Thank you for this song. Please just play a little bit, a little bit. Uh, I was just responding to the Holy Ghost. I just want you to just take your seat for a moment. Just take your seat for a moment. Because once, once we begin to flow in the healing, we will not stop. But I, I just want us to just take your seat for a moment. I was just praying for some some people. Lift up your hand. Say, Jesus. Thank you. Say, Jesus. Thank you. Call his name again. Mm -hmm. Again. Again. Jesus. Again. Jesus. Again. Jesus. Ooh, the anointing is walking in this place. Every time you mention that name, it's like the anointing which just moves in this place. So stronger, it just gets stronger and stronger.
Everyone say, Jesus, no more Gaza, no more Gaza. If you're tired of your life going through Gaza, come on, shout it out. You're tired of going through luck, going through situations in your marriage, in your family, in your home. Just shout that name of Jesus. Jesus! You can put down your hands. I, I'm going to ask you to do, we're going to do this. And then after that, I, I believe once the power of God begin to flow for healing, we will we'll not stop. But I just want us to, to, to be sensitive. I, I really believe that one of the things that really happened to my life, this is my own story, that divinely God began to impact me to do certain things. And I have come to realize that every time you respond to the will of God or you walk into the anointing of God. This is what the Old Testament was all about. These people walked into the presence of God and they had something that they, 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 they took back with them. The Bible says Zechariah, the story about Jesus' birth. It says Zechariah was the husband of Elizabeth and he was offering unto God on behalf of everybody and the angel of the Lord stood there and he said to him your prayers have been answered and your wife will have a child it wasn't until he came in the presence of God that his need was met the Bible said this man was a holy man they were righteous they had all the formula in place but they needed a divine impact Everything was in place, but something was missing. Who? The annual income of our people in Africa is $500. That's what people make a year. The whole year, $500. So when the Lord began to tell us to build a church of $11 million debt free, I said, there's no way. There's no way. But as people begin to respond to the will of God, something begins to happen. For two years, we had about two people having a car, but now it began to happen that there's over a thousand people who have cars. And in Africa, you don't buy car on credit. You have to pay for it. There are no credit facilities in, in my country. Who? Somebody. Everybody close your eyes. There is a person here somebody between your legs you've been having a growth that has grown there and you've been even so scared to tell anybody who the lord is delivering you the lord is delivering he's not in the business of embarrassing people but it's in the business of healing people and setting people free that thing dries up now in Jesus' name. Everybody close your eyes. Nobody looking. Wherever that person is, just stand up so that I put up your hand so that I can direct my prayer. Don't stand up. Just put up your hand so that I can direct my prayer wherever you are. In Jesus' mighty name, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. I cast it dead in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You can put down your hands. Or oh, somebody clap your hands to Jesus. God is a good God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Each one of us have a need in our family, in our home, in our children. Oh, 
Somebody lift up your hand. I tell you, the anointing of God is just rising. Somebody, you, you came here with a growth in your armpit. You, you came here with a growth in your armpit. Where are you? Where are you? Something was, was, was growing up, growing up there. Very painful, growing up there. Put up your hand quickly, please. Quickly, please. Come here, come here, mama. Come here quickly, please. I tell you, I, I, I can't even, I have to, have to, to be quick in this area. Because I tell you, God is, God is ready to bless people. How long have you had it, Mama? I'm not sure. I just noticed it lately. And uh -huh. I've just noticed the pain and lumps. And Put up your hand there, where that thing was. I've got it on both sides. Yeah. Put your hands like that, in both areas, exactly where they are. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Did you know? Look at me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. my Savior. My, my God, my God, you've done it. You've done it. Thank you. Jesus. Yeah, he has done it. Thank you, Jesus. They are gone. They are. They are. Where are you going, sister? Touch there again. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, listen, listen. The power of God is about to hit this place. It's, the anointing is so strong. It's just walking. I mean, some of you can't see it with the physical eyes. I wish you can see what I see. It's like a smoke all over this place. And God is about to divinely impact our lives. We are not going to go to, through Gaza anymore. We are not going to go through strongholds anymore. We are not going to go through lack anymore. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible said this guy was coming from Jerusalem to worship God and to give his arms and to give his tithe, not only for himself, but on behalf of Africa. There's something about the presence of God. There's something about coming from the presence of God. There is something that God will always do there when we, when we, when we, when we thank Him and we offer our offerings to Him in the light of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but there have never been a church, there have never been a ministry, there have never been a service, there have never been anything that I know in my generation that has literally impacted the whole world like this church. And I'm not saying this because the pastor is here. I'm not saying this because you're here. I'm not saying this because you're here. But they have never been, literally, you fly anywhere in the world today. Anglicans, Presbyterian, Assemblies of God, Baptist, people. Have, there have never been a move of the Holy Spirit that God has ever used to impact the whole world like this place. So the power, listen. The power of God that is in this place that has impacted the whole world is about to be channeled to impact your home and impact your life. It's about to come in strong than ever before. The same thing that has touched many pastors, many, I mean, they have never, you, you think about it. I, I mean, there have been so many moves of God. There have been so many evangelistic moves of God. There have been so many people of God God has used. But God, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I've never, literally. There has to be something in this place that I need to tap into, that you need to tap into individually. <laughs> Glory to God Almighty. Are you ready? If that means I say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord I'm, Lord, I'm ready. And I tell you, this year I, I really believe, Pastor, this is, this is what I'm sensing in my spirit. For three weeks I've been interceding and praying uh, for this ministry and for tonight. And the Spirit of the Lord was telling me, He said, the people individually are about to benefit. 
you've given to the world, now God is channeling the same power to impact you. So that it will be evident with you that God is with you. You know, when God is with you, three things will happen. When God is with you, three things will happen. He will add on you. Number two, he will subtract from you. Number three, he will multiply you. He will add on you his grace, but he will subtract you whatever is trying to kill you. And he will multiply the blessings you have. Now listen. I had asked somebody to get me about a thousand envelopes, but I don't know. Where's my sister Rose? How many of you know Sister Rose is such a real blessing? Pastor Secretary, she's such a blessing. Amen. Every time I talk to her on the phone, there is music in her voice. She's such a blessing. Where is she? Oh, she's off here. You've got the envelope, please. Bring me those envelopes, please, in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to ask you, brothers and sisters, that we're going to plant a seed. I'm going to plant a seed. Last time, Pastor, I was here, I planted a seed. And I waited for this time to give a testimony. I went to Venezuela, and we had a crusade there. And we needed 10,500 chairs in our church. Exactly like these chairs. Now, I don't know how much you paid for this. But you know, Rome, Georgia, church chairs told me I needed to pay something like $55 per chair plus seat shipping. So that would have come to $65 per chair. I'm in Venezuela. A man is miraculously healed of a liver cancer. He's one of the seven men who owns a company that makes these chairs in Venezuela. The rest of the story is a testimony. I plan I need I needed a miracle. I needed a miracle. I needed a miracle. And uh, God miraculously provide let me tell you, He provided half a million dollar out of the little seed that I planted. That, that that's how God works. And I'm here to tap into the anointing in this place. The seed we are giving is thanksgiving seed today in Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Of course, the Lord gave me instruction to pray for some people and anoint them with oil. And so we'll follow that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift up your hand, everybody, and close your eyes and, and ask the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. You are marvelous, Lord. You are wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, every time we breathe, every time we sing, every time we come in this place, thank you for the worship ministry. Thank you for the intercessors, Lord. Thank you for the ushers. Thank you for the cameramen in this place. Thank you for Pastor Kilpatrick. Thank you for the men and women holding his hand. Thank you for his wife, his children. Lord, we thank you to have a pastor of revival. Someone pastoring revival, not only for a week, but for years, Lord. Thank you for the so many men who would have quitted preaching the gospel, but they came here and their lives were transformed. Thank you for the evangelist Steve Hill. Thank you, my Father, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit in this body. Thank you, Jesus, for everybody who has done a great work in this ministry. And those who have just come and benefit from what you've done and partake of the blessing of God. But right now, I pray that, that the same power that has impacted the world will be channeled to the people who are here today. Yes. You'll get them out of debt. You'll meet their needs. You'll solve their problems in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to close your eyes and just be in the presence of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know some of us, especially if you're, you're here, you, you say, Lord, I, I, you know, I want to, to give a seat to the Lord. And you, you, you know, sometimes we have it there. Sometimes we don't have it there. Sometimes we walk with it. Sometimes we don't walk with it. But you, you really, you, you're going to be like me. You, you say, Lord, I'm, I'm going to plant a seed uh, in this ministry at Brainsville. Many, this church plants seeds. Last time I was here, you planted the seed in our ministry. And we are grateful. But I'm telling you today, let's plant a seed in this church. Let's plant a seed of thanksgiving. Thanking God for giving us. It would have been in Atlanta. It would have been in New York. It would have been elsewhere. But God to bring it down here. Let's just thank him. Let's just show him we love him when we thank him. And I, I, and I believe there are some people that I want to pray for. Especially, I don't know why. But there are some people that God wants me to pray for. And you're going to plant a seed of $1,000 plus and more than that. But from a thousand, I, you know, God wants me to pray for you. We're going to plant a seed. It, it, it's not going to be like no more. You know, it's, 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 it, 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 it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's not fundraising. It's, it's just taking a step to plant a seed in this ministry, in this church for what God wants to do. And, and so if you're there, there, I want you to come down here and then we'll get you an envelope in Jesus mighty name. You, you just come down here. You, you, you may not have it right now with you, but you just come down here. We will plant a seed. You will join me, and I believe God is going to, uh, to do a miracle with you. I want you to come down here quickly, please, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just walk down here quickly, please. That will, that will be a real blessing, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Others are going to plant a seed of 500. Others are going to plant a seed of 200. In Jesus' name. Others of 100. I want you to come down here quickly, please. Thank you, Jesus. I just feel my knees are shaking right now. I just want to, to be quick about this. And uh... I want to make it real clear tonight to everybody that Robert is not taking this offering for himself. He's taking this offering for Brownsville. He told me plainly before we walked out here, he said, this offering will not go to me, it goes to Brownsville. So I, I, we haven't had another minister come in here like this and do this for our church. And I bless him, and I, I just pray that God will bless him and just, just multiply it back to him so many times. Most men would take this up for themselves, but he's doing this for Brownsville. And Robert, I really appreciate that. And I wanted to make that clear. Hallelujah, glory to God. And, and, and when you get your envelope, please, and uh, you need, after you do it, you come down here with it because you're going to join with me, and I'm, I'm also planting my seed. I, I tell you, I, I tell you, there is such a power of God in this place. There's such a power of God in this place. You know, I, and I know you know it, and I know you know it, but I tell you, God is going to do a tremendous work, a tremendous, tremendous work in your life. You don't know, you know. Uh, what God has for you and what God has for us. And you know, I, I have The scripture, sometimes the Lord spoke to me, said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken all his children begging bread. The Lord told me, I said, who are the righteous? Am I righteous? The Lord said, yeah, if you do the right thing. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh, this is what I'm going to do because, I, you know, sometimes I want to do something when I'm under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask usually, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Last time Mama was here, Papa wasn't here. 
you know, but uh, since they're here, we, we're going to do something like they used to do in the book of Acts. I know you are already radical and you are crazy about Jesus. But the Bible said they brought their offering, put them at the feet of the apostle, and none of them lacked anything. There is a principle. When you really come and you put your offering to the feet of the man of God, it, it, it's, it's not religious, it's not tradition, but it's just biblical. It, there's, there's something you take, because the Bible said in the Old Testament, how lovely are the feet of they that bring the good news. So there's something about the feet. That's why Jesus took time before he died to wash the feet of the apostle. There's something that really happens. There's something that you receive when someone knocks on your door and, and comes with that blessing. So we're going to do that. And, uh, and, and I'm going to ask you to, if you, you, you put your offering there. And I know many of you are going to plant a seed. I know you, you need to make room. You need to make room. You need to make room. I know you've already set your budget for, for Christmas, for Easter, for, for the gifts to give. And you've set that, 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 that budget. But make room. Tell your neighbor, sir, make room for the Holy Ghost and I tell you even as some of us those of with the twenty dollars fifty dollars you know whatever you, you're gonna plant a seed today it's not about me it's not about you it's not about any, it's not about the church it's not about anybody it's about you receiving a divine impact in the areas where you need it like that man was a worshiper was a giver was everything and God divinely impacted him I really believe God is gonna do a tremendous work in this in, this, in, in your life it's about you. It's about you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Please get an envelope. Get an envelope. Uh, get an offering. Get an offering. If you don't have one, put up your hand. We'll give you one. You, you definitely, you cannot, you cannot miss this chance. Put up your hand. We shall get you an offering in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You, you, you need a divine impact in your family, in your home, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Put up your hand, we shall get you one. If you don't have an envelope, put up your hand in Jesus' name. If you don't have an, 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 if you don't have an offering, stand up on your feet so that we can rush you an offering in Jesus' name. If you need, you need an offering, stand up on your feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. So you need an offering? Oh, you need an envelope, yeah. If you, if you need an offering, put up your hand. We'll rush you an offering. In Jesus' name. Now, those of you who need an offering, come down here quickly, please. In Jesus' name. If you need an offering, come here. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Anybody need of, a, need of an offering? Put up your hand. Anybody in need of an offering? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you need an offering? Come here. Come here. miss tonight I, I, I me I seriously believe that God is is about to impact you so that you can go back to your home and impact every neighborhood somebody say amen, amen. now I'm gonna ask that because I want to anoint some people with oil and I'm gonna ask the pastor to come and stand over here please so that we can lay uh, our offering to you in Jesus name now listen to this 
Those of you are planting a seed of a, because I can't lay hands on everybody, but I seriously believe because people are going to plant about a thousand five hundred dollars, they're really taking a step of faith. They're really, really taking a step of faith. Uh, or more than that, I want you to come down here. I'll lay hands on you and I'll pray with you. I, I really believe, I want to obey the Holy Spirit because the Lord told me to do that. And uh, so I want you to come here quickly before everybody comes. It, it's not to accuse among people, but I, I, just, I just feel that there is uh, something that God is going to do. So I want you to come down here so that I, I'll, I'll pray with you. And I know God will, will cause a miracle to take place in your life. In Jesus' name, no more Gaza. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You are mighty. Thank you, Lord. You've established this marriage, Lord, and you've built it. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, please, please come here quickly, please. We'll, we'll need some more ashes, please. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Come together, please. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for this marriage and I thank you are supplying every single need. You are meeting every situation, my Father, in this family, in Jesus' name. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, cause and miracle to take place. In this family, a financial major breakthrough. Then ever before, Father, we give you praise. We glorify your holy name. You are mighty, Lord. You are mighty, Jesus. You are mighty. Lord, we establish this, your servant, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you, Jesus, for the divine financial breakthrough. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise, O oh God. By your holy name, Jesus. Yes. This is your time. This is your moment. Father, bless this man in Jesus' mighty name by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I give you praise, Jesus. You're doing a mighty work in their lives. I'm going to ask you, just come here and please, just come here and bring your offering. Just come here and bring your offerings, please, in Jesus' name.
people, Lord, we give you praise. Father, we are believing God. Come on, believe with us. Be believing God that this power of the Holy Ghost, the revival that has impacted this place will literally, 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 literally be a blessing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are doing great. Thank you, Jesus. Please go ahead. Go ahead and give your offering in Jesus' name, please. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and put in your offering, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and put in your offering. Go ahead and put in your singers. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and put it in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Bring the temple back just a little bit. Here we go, everybody sing his blood.
Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Listen to this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask, uh, sorry, Pastor, I'm going to ask you to come back here. You, you remember, we re remember, listen, this is amazing. You, you remember Gideon had 300 men. Say 300. 300. David had 600. Jesus had 12. I don't know how many Holy Spirit has here, but I, I, I was just thinking here, where's my change? Oh, you're trying to get me my change? Okay, I have to wait for another one? Okay. This is me. You don't know let me tell you something a, 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 a brother has just come here say i'm from texas he said we want revival in our church what, what, what is where's the brother he says from texas he said we want revival where are you sir that's over there that's what i'm talking about he's come from texas to get revival from here you don't know what the impact of this revival is to the whole world and you've seen it you know many nations have been here but secondly sometimes we overlook and we fail to become the 300 men of Gideon the 600 men of, of, of David the 12 men with Jesus I mean the surrounding and I pray that today God will touch you and we are going to do it by an action this is the year 2000 
my twenty dollars will represent their two thousand. You know, I'm, I'm just you know, it's an act of faith because God sometimes looks for obedience, an act of faith. And I'm surrounding. I'm going to become one of the the six hundred to surround you, Pastor, to pray for you, to support you, to send you some offering once in a while, because I tell you. What you are involved with, the enemy will do anything possible to stop you. But I believe God is going to cause you to travel around the world and bring impact and change and bring revival. It cannot be as business as usual anymore. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm one. So let me get some young men here. Come here. This one with the, with the, with the angel hair. Let me get another one. Come here. This young girl is 15 years old. She's in the orphanage. And she came here and said, Can I find a family? Can I have a family? I'm tired of living in an orphanage. Here, this 20. Come here, sweetie. Yeah. Come here, come this way. We already five. So if there is another people who want to become part of the 300, we, we just, just bring it to the pastor. Please, if you could stand here, pastor. We, I believe that God is, is going to give you, it's not the amount, because this is too small. This is too small. But it is our act. We are obeying God. We are saying we are standing with you. And we are saying we want to be the 600 men who are with, 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 with uh, David. We want to be the 300 God will use to smash literally the enemy. Because church, let me tell you. If Florida is going to determine the election of the United States, God still has something to do with this state. And it, it, please, it's not political. This is God. You know, you look at your, you, you, the state, the state, the way it's designed. They call it the pen handle. But the, that's the real thing, like a trigger where the gun is. The whole fire will have to come from Florida. I, oh, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm not here. But I, I tell you, I've learned so many things about examining your state and seeing what God is trying to do. God is literally trying to say, I'm going to use this state for my glory. And, uh, and it's an act of, of obedience. It's an act of our affirmation. It's an act of saying, Pastor, we're going to stand with you. It's small, you know. And, and, uh, and we're going to plant that seed. So if there are others who are going to join in to be the 6300 or be the 12 or to be whatever you're going to be, just, just bring it and come around here before we pray for the sick. Just, just, just get an offering in your hand and just come around and, and stand with him and, and, and believe God. We're going, to, we're going to declare. We surround you with prayer. We surround you with, with the word of God. We surround you with our love. We surround you with our action. We will be the 600 men. We will be the 600 women. Women. We will be the, the, the men who will fight with you, who will pray with you. Wherever you travel, wherever you go, wherever we will, we will in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. So please, if you're coming, please come quickly because we want to do this quickly in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful, Pastor, for your obedience. Because you would have, you would have, you would have said it's too, too much expense, it's too much this, I can't take the revival for five years, I can't do this. You, you would have, you know... This is not the thing, you know, you had to obey. This was an act of obedience. And out of an act of obedience, I have met pastors in Texas. I've met pastors in England. In, I mean, these are Anglican, Anglican reverends. These, uh, you call them Episcopalian here. And many of them are saying, I was touched by the Holy Spirit in Brownsville. My life, I, I was going to quit church. Now they are preaching Jesus, people are getting saved. And it, it is something in Australia, in, 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 in China, in Japan. We were in Japan and we met a pastor there. 
Pastor Hirok, you know, she came here. She was here for two months at the first week of revival. Her life is on fire for God. She's reaching out. I mean, people have been literally transformed by the power of God. So I just want you to, to just raise up your hand towards the pastor and, uh, and, and just speak a blessing. Speak a blessing to his health, to his life, to his wife, to his children by the grace of God. Father, we affirm you. We affirm the man of God. We stand with him. We believe God with him. Father, use him mightily. We thank you for the revival. We thank you for the move of the Holy Spirit. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. You are wonderful, Lord. You are marvelous, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we thank you. Continue to use him. Continue to pour his spirit. We will be the 600 men. We will be the 300 men. We will be the the 12 lord we will be lord we will be